Okay, so this is what is called the floating strip technique. And hopefully you can see that these little strips of paper in the background are actually up off of the card on dimensionals. Um, and then of course in a perf perfectly circular shape. I will show you how that's done and then I'll show you some more samples. So I'm gonna start with my card base and this is an A5 size tonight. So this is um, the length of our card stock, which is about um, just under 12 inches and then four and an eighth inches across. And then I've got my mats for the front, which are the Sahara sand is five, sorry, this way, five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And then the white is five and a half by three and three quarter. And I've gone ahead and embossed that with the tasteful texture folder um, just for just to give it a little bit of interest now to create that floating strip technique you can start with either a square piece of acetate and I know you can't really see that and there's nothing I can put them on to so that you can see that or you can go ahead and cut it to the shape that you want I am going to go ahead and use the one that's already in a circle but I will explain why as we go along, it will make more sense. I'll just set that where I can find it. So I've gone ahead and cut the circle first and I've used the layering circle dies. And these, these are a great um, tool to have in your stash because circles are you know, otherwise impossible to cut unless you have dies or punches. Then I'm gonna use grid paper. And I liked using the grid paper because then you can actually line up your strips because you can use the, the grid that's on the grid paper. Now for this one, on the sample that I showed you, I used strips of different colors of paper. On this one, I'm just gonna use Sahara sand. But what I did was I've actually already embossed it. You can probably see that. And then I cut the strips after I embossed it. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and adhere that onto the acetate. Now you'd want to use glue dots or a tape runner or tape. I used glue earlier today and I'll tell you what, when you run it through your die cutter afterwards, the glue squishes out and it goes everywhere. So just learn from my sad experience, don't use glue on your acetate uh, for this particular technique. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up around the top of my circle. And then I'm going to take a second strip and using that grid paper, just kind of um, making sure that there's an even space between them and that my strips are on straight. Although you certainly could put them on um, not straight. I didn't make a sample doing that, but that, that's another idea. And I'm gonna to choose to put my strips on, not all evenly spaced. Uh, you could have your strips all evenly spaced or even widths. I've done mine in kind of um, different widths and different spaces, just to make it that little bit more interesting. It kind of depends to what um, sort of theme you're going for. And then I think I'll leave it like that. Then, what I would do is take scissors and then I would go around here and just trim off to match the circle. And, and I've got one that I've already done, so I won't do that with you right now. So I've got that one that I've already done. Now you could also, as I mentioned earlier, um, just put your strips on the square and then after you've adhered them on, run them through with your die and then uh, it's all perfectly matched and cut. The reason why I didn't do that with this is because I have embossed it and if I ran it through the die cutter again, all my embossing would be flattened. But with all the other samples that I'm gonna show you later, that's the way I did it. I just did it on a square or a rectangle and then die cut it afterwards. So either method works. And then from here, we're gonna to wanna to put it on to our, our front piece. And this is Sahara Sand too. I don't know if I said that. 
And this is where your mini dimensionals are very useful because you've got these little thin strips or you could use the adhesive strips, which is what I'm gonna use for the video. And these are just really quick and easy because obviously you don't want your adhesive to be showing through the acetate. Okay, and then we'll put that onto our card front. And then you've got these, let me pull it down so I can get it straight. Then you have basically these strips of paper that I know you can see the shine on the video, but when you know, you're looking at it with the naked eye, it just looks like these strips are floating there and it's quite a cool look. And then I'm gonna put this onto our card front and it, it looks cool, but it's actually really quite easy to do, which is, you know, a great sort, a great sort of project. All right, then from there, we just want to embellish. And I, you may have seen the note on the Facebook Live um, little blurb, but I'm gonna use the Iconic dies. And these are a great set of dies. They don't actually match with any stamp set at all. They just are standalone, but you've got the little um, ferns and leaves and flowers and bees and toadstools and birds and branches. And you just have a lot of various images that um, you know can work in with other things that you have or just used as a standalone. So I thought it would be fun to use these toadstools. And I, um, cut those out of the shimmer paper or, gl or glitter paper, I think is actually what it's called. And you can see that it's quite ombre. So I spread the toadstools out so that I got a light one and a darker one. And I'll put those on. I think with the bigger one, I'm gonna put it on with um, just glue or you could use tape, whoops, got quite a bit there. So that it's down flat. So you could choose to have your dies within the circle or have them kind of hanging off the circle. I'm going to have mine hanging off. And then this one, the smaller one, I've put up on dimensionals. I am going to send this card that I'm making to somebody. So be sure and leave me some comments or ask questions if I skip over something. Then for the, for the words, I'm going to use this new set and I did get it out. I've shown you several times on various videos and Facebook lives. Oh gosh, now I've forgotten the, the name of it, but the stamp set that's like this, that's just one giant stamp with lots of words. And then there's the die that just cuts out all the words all at once. And now in the new book, they've come out with another one that goes with that same die just with um, obviously different words. So I've just prepared some of those. And does anyone have a preference? Because um, I might be sending this to you. I'm liking Friends Forever or You Did It because this one's kind of a, you know, more of a whimsical card. So we don't want, or even You're the Best. We don't really want probably um, a sympathy word or anything with um, the toadstools. I'm just thinking which one's actually, what shape is actually going to work best. Probably the Friends Forever or You're the Best. Then inside the card, I've just done another layer of the Sahara Sand and the um, Whisper White, or Basic White, I should say. I'm thinking I'm going to do the You're the Best because either I can't see comments or people are talking to their screens and not writing, which is okay. And I'm thinking actually it's, I'm gonna put it up like this. I'm gonna put a you're the best under there. There we go. And then I'm going to put some gold gems on there. So I think the gold works well with the toadstools. We'll put them here and one there, and then maybe um, another one kind of down there. There we go. So that's just a very simple but cute card. And I will put pictures of that up too. And it is nice that the toadstools are nice and glittery. 
And this is a great technique for using all of these little scraps and bits and pieces that I know we all end up with. And I usually just throw them away, to be honest. But when I'm cutting out card fronts and mats and layers, you end up with little strips. So this is a great way to actually make use of them in quite a, a fun, easy technique. Okay, so that's one. And then I showed you also this sample earlier. And this is also using the iconic dies and that same mini happenings stamp set. And this iconic um, die with the fern, I thought particularly Kiwis would uh, like this one. And even the negative image is quite nice. I think you could use that and maybe cut it out with like the stitched rectangle and use the negative as well. This is, um, I really like how that one turned out. This one, if I have to be honest, I didn't love how this one turned out, but you can give me your opinion. I used the bumblebee and saffron and gold and then used from the iconic dies the uh, branch and the bird. And then I couldn't figure out where to put words, so I just had to do another little piece down here, which that looks fine, but um, I don't know. I just... This one wasn't probably my favorite of the batch. And I think it's okay to share the ones that maybe you experimented with and you didn't totally love to. I'll just move those over here into the corner. Now this one, I did really love how this turned out. So this one is using the Mountain Air bundle. That's the one that's got, well, big surprise mountains in the uh, dies and images and then you've got these great tree dies um, also in there same stamp set I've pretty much all of them have used this one and then use that great evergreen folder in the background too and this will make just a really nice masculine card I um, this one I thought turned out quite quite well and then the last one is I've used for this one the expressions and in ink bundle and I had, um, I've been making, well, helping make wedding invitations for one of my girls. And we had just some strips, like some one inch strips of this beautiful green jade and gold marble paper left. And I thought, well, let's use those because they're so beautiful. I need to use them for something. And I cut those then with the stitched rectangle. I don't know if you can see the little stitching on the edge. And then this is in that Expressions and in Ink die, done that in gold, and then just added um, a little label and some gold gems. So there you go. I'm sure you don't have to look too hard to find some little scraps and bits and pieces in your stash that you can then use to create something, um, something beautiful. So thanks for joining me tonight. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. This is Jackie, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.